Minecraft just introduced a brand new weapon. It is called the Mace. It is that powerful, it is able to kill a warden in one shot. An ongoing debate in the Minecraft community right now is, is the Mace weapon too overpowered? And does it actually need to be nerfed before Mojang release the 1.21 update? In order to answer that question, we need to dig a little bit deeper because it's not as simple as a Minecraft player jumping out the sky inside of an ancient city 150 blocks in order to kill a warden. In this video, we have the confirmed information on how rare this item is from the Minecraft developers. In order to obtain this brand new weapon, you first need to head to a trial chamber. Now there is a lot of RNG included in this because of course, you first have to get yourself a trial key from completing a trial spawner. You are then gonna have to open yourself the vault. Now the new vaults are distinguished by these tough blocks now, which I think is a good addition because you can actually tell how many of them are going to be in your world. Now, after doing a bunch of exploring in several different trial chambers, there is around about anywhere from 8 to 15 of these vaults available inside of the new trial chambers. Now, this is one of the rooms that the developers have recently updated, and I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There could be one underneath. So, let's say 6 or 7 in just one room. In order to get one of these, as confirmed by King B Dogs, there is only a 2.2% chance in each and every single vault for you to get the brand new mace. That means on average, you're going to be opening this every 40 to 50 times inside of a vault. So on average, we're going to say each trial chamber has 12 vaults. It could be more, it could be less. All depends on how lucky you get. That means you are going to have to explore on average three to five trial chambers in order to get the heavy core, which is used to craft the mace. Now, remember, this is only a 2.2% chance. And the interesting thing here is if you're not lucky in this trial chambers, you're then going to have to go and explore another one. Now, the trial chambers aren't exactly pointless at this point. Yes, yes. You're not able to reopen these ever. Another player who joins your world would be able to. However, we know that the spawners do have a cooldown. I think it's every 30 to 60 minutes. So you do still have an incentive to come back. Especially if you want to kill the breeze and get the breeze rods and make yourself the wind charge. This, on the other hand, is completely void. Which means I'd have to go and find myself another trial chambers. Have to take it all on. Have to hopefully unlock all of these vaults and get incredibly lucky which we're gonna check right here once again i did not get lucky we're then gonna have to go and explore another one so in terms of getting it i think the balance is there because i think once you have this item you are gonna be incredibly powerful we still did not manage to get it so that would be three of the trial chambers I've explored. And I'll be at this point, I would probably be relatively angry. Let's see if we get it on the fourth try right here. Are we any lucky? No. So I was incredibly unlucky last time. We're going to try, let's say, on the fifth one. So technically on this one, we should, we should actually get it. But let's see if we are that lucky this time. It could be more, guys. It could be more. It could be less. But this just goes to show you how rare this item is to obtain. So at this point, we should technically get the heavy core. In survival, you're going to be so angry at this point because you've explored countless trial chambers, probably perished a whole bunch of times. And voila, we did actually manage to get ourselves the heavy core. So, although I don't know where that's actually gone. Um, <laughs> apparently, it's not inside of my inventory. But as you guys can see, this took us a very long time to get. And the most important thing to understand here is doing this as a survival player, it is going to take you quite some time. A mace in Minecraft by default has an attack damage of 7. That is the exact same as a diamond sword. Meanwhile, a netherite sword has the attack damage of 8. As mentioned on the official wiki page, the mace has an attack speed of 1.6 and takes 0.625 seconds to recover 
It deals 7 damage on Java Edition and 8 on Bedrock Edition. But it also depends on the distance the player has fallen before damaging the mob. So that means it should take three hits, the exact same as a diamond sword. Let's test that theory. One, two, and three, and it's dead. We do it with a mace without jumping or falling. One, two, and three, and it's dead. Now, it's important to understand that critical hit gives you a 50% damage boost. So this should be one and two. You know when you've got a critical hit because of the particles. So let's test this. One and two. It is practically the exact same as a diamond sword until you start introducing height into the equation. The damage dealt with the mace is boosted five plus damage for every block fallen after the first. A one block fall only counts as a regular critical hit and does not boost the mace's damage. The damage boost from fall height does not have a limit and it is even possible to kill a warden in one hit. As a result, the mace is, situationally, the strongest weapon in the game. For context, the warden has 500 health. In order to deal sufficient damage to kill the warden, the player would need to fall a distance of 99 blocks. From the critical hit damage for the first block fallen and 490. Additionally, damage from the other 98. So that means towering up three slash four blocks should now be enough to kill yourself a pillager, making this a truly destructible weapon in the game. So if anything, like a cow, you really don't have to jump that high and it's going to save you click spamming. Now, something like a witch does have a little bit more health. Same with something like an enderman. So you are going to have to tower a little bit more, but... It's not exactly super high at all in order for you to just kill these mobs. In terms of survival aspects, this is going to be incredibly powerful. I think in terms of PvP, it is going to be quite scary for servers. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when you start interpreting not only the best armors in the game, but also things like the elytra, this means players are going to be unstoppable. The official wiki also states sharpness on a mace is not particularly helpful since it only increases the base damage, leaving the boost from height unchanged. As a result, a mace with sharpness deals barely more damage than a mace without. So there has been a lot of people talking about should it be enchantable? What enchantments should be on it? A lot of people have speculated mending and unbreaking. So in terms of the likes of sharpness, there is really no point in doing this. The only increased damage that's going to happen is the higher you go up. Now, the question is, in survival, are players going to do this? Absolutely, players are going to be doing this. If you have yourself a totem, which let's be real, most Minecraft survival players do have totem farms at this point, you can actually see how truly devastating this could be, especially against something, I don't know, like an Enderman, Ravages, Pillages, groups of mobs, you name it. So a lot of people have been saying, are people really going to do what I'm doing right there? Yes, yes, they are. People are going to do that. Now, obviously, you can cheat death with a totem. Remember, you only do not take damage as long as you hit your intended targets. So that means if you miss, let's say I miss this guy, I'm going to pop my totem and then no doubt I'm going to be in trouble, right? Like I'm going to be screwed, especially if I'm trapping him like here. I do not stand any chance at all. You can cheat death. You can negate your damage, but you have to hit your intended target. And how easy is it going to be to trap a warden like this? In survival, not very easy. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you're not able to put the wind charge in your offhand as of yet. It's unclear if it's going to be introduced. If it is, it's going to be incredibly powerful. I think on Minecraft Java Edition, because there is a cooldown on the attack, it's, I'm going to say, a lot more balanced, should we say. The spam clicking on Bedrock Edition can make this so overpowered. Now, obviously, granted... I've got a health boost and regen, for example. But if you're taking on any kinds of monster, such as like Withers or, I don't know, Ravages, Ender Dragons, anything at all, this combination is still incredibly powerful. It's not hard to switch just one inventory slot and kill 
a whole entire group of these. So a few things to take into consideration. If you are playing survival, you will be hit with the blindness effect. It's not going to be as easy as you just dropping a hundred odd blocks from the sky. But when you do have your wings, you do somewhat become very, very powerful, especially if you have yourself apples, golden enchanted apples and potions. So you can use the elytra as like a flyby mechanism. And I'm going to try and see if we can get this going here. It's not very easy to do. Just know that it is possible. I'm curious if I could kill these, even though we do have the, the, the regens on. I mean, we're hitting them. We are hitting them and they are getting knocked, knocked back slightly. So, cool. It's, it's good. It would take a few hits. A trident plus the elytra plus this is what I think a lot of people have been talking about recently in the community. There you go. We managed to hit that with, with one shot right there. So, the warden, not so easy. The wither, not difficult at all. Let's go and try something like the ender dragon. I think it's important to be noted that I wouldn't have the elytra at this point, right? I wouldn't. It just wouldn't be a thing. But if you did manage to go to the end city before you went here, yes, you would be able to one-shot an ender dragon. So the conclusion I've got is I don't think the mace on its own is actually a problem. I think the problem occurs when you start including wings. I think they need to make a fine balance with the elytra plus the wing combination. You can see I did jump from all the way up there and it didn't actually do enough damage to kill this. But flying around will. So if I was to just keep flying around with this thing, going up. I think the developers need to come up with a solution with the elytra. That's where I'm finding all of these problems. That's where things are becoming extremely overpowered. The flyby situation just seems a little bit messy. Now, don't get me wrong. I love that this thing is incredibly powerful. But I think there's a balance that needs to be introduced. I'd definitely love to know people's opinions in the comments.